stuff. This is fantastic. I have to look for 10 seconds. We're good. Thank you. This is the first time you and I have ever collaborated on anything that what well to a degree we we were involved with something but we weren't together. And this is the first time ever you and I have ever had a conversation. Uh, we've talked mm -hmm. online a little bit, comments over the years. But my God, thank you for joining, man. It's great to see you. Welcome. How thank the heck are you? And uh, I'm blessed. Always. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you know what, Sifu Fu, for those who don't know, give a 360 degree view of who you are. Uh, and then I'm going to jump into some questions and talk about some stuff that you did for me that you didn't know about in my Wing Chun journey. And uh, we're going to talk about everything today. Okay. Well, who I am, first and foremost, I'm a born again Christian, Bible believing, God fearing, Jesus loving uh, Christian. So uh, that's who I am personally as a, as a, a human being. Uh, I always preach Christ first. And uh, I am Vietnamese, part Chinese. I learned from my grandfather. I learned a system which I call uh, eight steps of short and long fist. Christ and, first. Uh, and, my uh, background. Uh, I've learned from many different teachers in my life, but um, the one teacher that really helped me uh, focus on how I want to teach is uh, he taught me to use principles uh, and focus on the principles. Don't worry about the moves. Don't worry about the formats. Focus on the energy and the principle. And that was actually how I started uh, focusing and developing NDN. Uh, and, and for those who don't know, NDN is Ngo Dak Na, I named after my grandfather. Um, so uh, Ngo is my last name, Dak is my middle name that carried on to my great great grandfather, and so on. And Na means to control. So um, I use those words together to honor my grandfather. How long? You've, uh, you were one of the, the first and the biggest uh, Wing Chun channels on YouTube as well, too. You, when, uh, when did I you start? Don't know that. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't know that. I, I don't really do any social media of any kind. That's why I have Sifu Larry and CJ yeah, Jamie. In I want to. I want to. I want to give something across. I want to. I want to address a, um, a a a perception that I think is important. That a lot of people, when we look at the uh, martial arts on YouTube and everything else, people get a, a, oh, this guy has got to be this. This guy got to have to be has to be that. Um, I have always seen you as uh, the the word is not arrogant. It's proud, it's an and it is. Um, very, very, very like strong in your views on whatnot, but you've never been judgmental. You never come across in any of your teachings as mine is the only way to do it. This is this. But when you deliver your instruction, you're dead set on how you uh, you you know what you're talking about. So when I when I watch people like you over the years, you know, it was it was you. It was uh, Ed and Ken out from Chicago from Windy Wing Chun. It was um, Joseph Simonette. From key fighting systems, he just passed away, and he uh, he oh. incorporated Wing Chun in his uh, C lot. Um, and I know I'm missing just a few others, but there was a few others that really made the big impact on on the martial arts within the last 10, 10 15 years, at least fifteen years on YouTube. And you were one of them. So to oh. hear that to hear that you don't realize that you did that, that kind of goes into the, uh, the the humility, something that I really don't possess much of. So cheers to you for that. Oh, okay, thank you. Well, I, like again, you know, my view is always Christ and Christ first, and uh, it's not about me. It's always about Him. So when I hear good comments, I always give it to the Lord because without Him, I'm nothing. And it's He who made me who I am, and uh, He's always going to have glory. Sifu Fu, uh, before we went live, um, talked about that with Christianity, and I never really bring it up that much on certain platforms. And for me, it is kind of like, wow, I'm seeing more and more in this journey uh, of those who are, are giving Christ all the all the credit, and it's 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 baffling it's a, it's amazing it's fantastic um what made you start youtube you know you're you've got this strong background in in martial arts um, passion Sifu larry and cj uh, jamie I'll, 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 <laughs> those are the two that did it i'll answer that yeah um, you gotta so get more on, so, you gotta get more on camera we can't see a little bit there you go how's that Better? perfect yep yeah so ironically i had gotten a really cheap camcorder years and years ago and so i was taking private lessons i'm like hey Sifu, can i record these lessons and i just wanted to upload them um, to YouTube really just because to see if I knew how to do it. And then I forgot about it for about a year or two. And then my business partner, CJ Jamie, um, one day we were looking in our inboxes and we had hundreds and hundreds of emails of people asking, do we sell DVDs? Where do we teach? Do you have a website? We didn't have anything. <laughs> we really, there was nothing. And then CJ Jamie, she really started to drip on um, all of us, me on Sifu Fu. You guys should really put something together. She does web development and things like that. And she's like, I'll do everything. I'll spend $197 a month just to be a member, just make this available to other people. Because she used to ask me, show me different Wing Chun schools. 
and I'm not trying to um, start trouble with anybody. Oh, and, I do that but, enough. You're you're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, right, this is Dominic's <laughs> channel. Yeah. My bad. You're fine. <laughs> um, but she would go, "What about this school or that school in different states?" And I'd be like, "If you want me to tell you the truth, it's garbage." Right? The, what I the, the, what I would see from their structure, their postures, the way that they practiced, and everything, I'd be like. You know, Jamie, this stuff will not help you fight yourself out of a wet paper bag. You know, I don't mean to interrupt it's you, but that's my point. That's the one thing your school doesn't do. You guys don't criticize openly or, or I, I know that the, my delivery always comes across as being an ass or disrespectful. You guys never do that. And that's what I'm saying is when you guys teach, you see Steve Fu, Fu, Fu teaching something, you're like, okay, he, he's got a grin every now and then when he teaches something, <laughs> right? And you could tell he's almost got that mini condescending of, yeah, you're teaching this wrong. But he never. But you guys never disrespect anybody else, and I think that has a big credit for why a lot of people keep going to your content, myself included. Well, here's my view, and I learned this a long time ago. So, and I stick by it here by it, and uh, hopefully, uh, anyone who watches it, they'll be able to uh, hear it too. Um, but I read a long time ago, learned a long time ago. Whoever is learning whatever art, they're always going to say the teacher the best, their system the best. They're always going to say that, and they have to. Why would you take, let's say, Win Chun, if you think karate is better, and say, you know what? I think the karate is the best system in the world, but I'm going to take the second best art and be the best, I'd be the second best thing. My, you know, you have to come in there to the school believing the system is the best, believing the teacher is the best. Otherwise, why would you put your time, your money, and your efforts in training something that you believe is not the best? So my, my view is I don't knock anybody down. I show my system for what it is and let them come to their own conclusion. There's no reason. If something's good enough to be what it is, I don't have to knock something else out. I just show the qualities of what I do, and they can come to their own conclusion. I don't have to bash anybody down. I just have to show what I do and let them decide for themselves. So anytime we, I, I, all the years I sparred, so many people who come into my school, and you know they tell me they do Wing Chun, they do karate, they do Kung Fu, they do Krav Maga, MMA, and my job is look, just just do what you do, and I'll do what I do, and let the proof be in the pudding, let it come out to what it is, you know. Uh, and so that's my view. Um, so I'm not here to knock anyone down. I'm here to show what my art is, and it's your job, your decision, your choice to decide whether you like it or not. So not I'll, everybody likes cake. <laughs> Some people like ice cream. Can I, can I say and, something, Stephen? Yeah, I of think course. Dominic might appreciate this. So, and, and dude, Dominic, I literally watch mostly all of your content since you've been putting out content, dude. Thank I, you. I, that's why I reached out to you. I'm like, this friggin' SOB, we're on the same wavelength when it comes to the essence of how you need to train martial arts, what you're really looking for. So I was always attracted to that, which is why I reached out to you on Facebook. Um, dude, no matter how much I would go at this guy early on, because we've done, I have, we have thousands of videos all over yeah. the place. <clears throat> no matter how realistic it is, no matter how many places I've worked, no matter how realistically I train my martial arts, you know, there's that YouTube Facebook troll going, uh, that's not going to work. I'm just going to do this afterwards. <laughs> so there, so that's I, I want to ask this because you just you just brought up something that most other seafoods wouldn't tolerate, and and it goes in a testimony. I want to bleed this into why you guys are so successful and how it affected me. Uh, you just said that you were watching my content while training underneath your seafood. Do you know how many how many seafoods wouldn't tolerate that? How many seafoods would never allow you? They'd be like, "You were watching this video, I'm sorry. right?" They would. They, I I can't tell you how many times. Not, no, yeah, no, it's that's that's how it is. Like, what are you watching their stuff for? So the fact that he was, oh, you know, you you're open minded to that says a lot. I will tell you. Now I get defensive when I watch other people's contents because it's we base everything off of our immature emotional uh, response to our. Oh no, that's not. They're teaching the bong sao wrong. It was it was your video on spirals. Right. So I'm watching your video on spirals. I don't know how many years ago was that? Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was at least 10 years ago. So I had been in Wing Chun since 1998. And then you fast forward to what, 2012, 2011, 2012, 2013. So I've been doing a considerable amount of, long amount of time. And it, it took your video for me to go. How did I not recognize that there were spirals in this art the entire time? Almost from the very first opening movement, you're doing a spiral motion. So I want to give you credit for I'm invested into my Wing Chun journey for over a decade and I watch your content and you gave me light bulb moments to go off. That's how effective of a teacher you are for a lot of us. Oh, so massive you. appreciation for that. Um, talk about your methodology. Let's you have one of the most unique and really methodical methods of teaching where you're yeah. really into mechanics, energy, yeah. 
uh, Bob, mechanics, physics, energy, yeah. Um, the one thing that's universal, no matter what style, no matter what art you take, energy is energy. It cannot be changed. It's the principles, principles. So I teach to the principles. Um, you know, like I, you know, I'm probably sure you've seen my videos where someone likes to say, well, I go five plus five is two. Someone will go, no, no, eight plus two is 10. And I go five plus five is 10. And that's two, I'm sorry, five plus five is 10. Someone says eight plus two is 10. Someone says 20 divided by two. It's okay. Principles are the same. It doesn't matter how you get there. It's about making sure that you follow the principles to get there. And you and the goal is to make it the most efficient and effective way of doing it. So you're not wasting energy. I can get to, uh, like I, someone told me before, I can break a mirror with my fist committing to it, or I can be very skilled, just hit and break it and smash it. Uh, we have different methods. It's just a matter of who. Now that depends on your physicality, your personal mentality. So that's why some people won't like Win Chun. It's not for them. They're like Tai Chi or they're like MMA. They're, Bruce Lee learned Tai Chi when he was a young kid uh, from what I've read. And he didn't like it. It was too slow, too boring for him. So they moved him over to the Win Chun. Everybody has their flavor of ice cream, right? So um, it's all ice cream. It's all made of the same ingredients if it's done right. And it's all good and delicious. You just have to find a flavor that you liked and that you want to do. So um, again, I'm about the energy. The energy is not committed to the style, the manner in which you move. It's how you move behind it. You know, I talk about it doesn't matter structure. I could do a tonsil like this, like this. It's all about making sure that I have the proper energy behind that connection. That's the key. That's the universal truth. Um, the universal truth is no matter where in the universe, it's the same. Right, weight is not universal because it depends on gravity. Mass is universal because it doesn't matter where you are; it's the same. Everything I teach is through the science because it cannot be irrefuted unless the science principle is wrong. My science principles are not wrong. It's based on energy. It's based on principles of motion, of uh, human anatomy, biomechanics. So I do a lot through that. You know, like when I teach, you know, what's the principle of energy? You know, I teach through the knowledge. So when people see that I teach, they know what I'm talking about. They understand, and then I prove it. You know, I do things like people are like, how the heck do you do that? I use my finger to control them. No matter how big they are, I can make my elbow like this and they can't bend my elbow because I can channel uh, and do all that stuff. And again, they're like, how do you do that? It's so foreign because they don't understand. People only know what they know. They teach what they only know. Uh, I teach through the science. So you become more knowledgeable. You, you give a man a fish, he eats for the day. Teach a man a fish, he'll eat fish for the rest of his life. So I go on the principle when I teach. I, I don't want you to just repeat what I do. I want you to understand it so that way you can you can perform it, you can perfect it, and you can make it better if you're uh, uh, into it. So I'm not one to want you to repeat something, which is, I think, personally, a lot of people, they fail because what you lack in technique, you'll make up in strength. That's a fact. So Donald, yeah, it is. I, I default to that many times. I, I want to give you credit, Blair, before I go, let you go for a second. You were the one of the first people that that kind of like gave me the the self permission to where when I started teaching and doing YouTube videos, and I would realize that you would you'd use it right. The tonsil it doesn't have to be dedicated like this. And I would go, well, this is tonsil in application, and I couldn't find anybody else to support what I was saying. So I looked like an ass in the Wing Chun community. Then you come across your content, and I'm going. He's saying exactly what I'm saying. So you are one of the channels that kind of like gave me the confidence to be to, to to express my views in this, and it also gave me the you know I would use you as references. You know I, I would put content up, and then I'd go I'd look at you and other people, and I go, all right, am I right? Because a lot of time I would self doubt myself for the first few years of teaching, and then I would come to your content and see that. You, you you express and you teach far better than I do, but I was so pleased to see that the racing thoughts in my head were channeled and, and personified in what you were delivering. So you really have done a, a lot for all of us. Uh, oh, Steve Larry, go ahead. What I thought was, I think this is important because it, it's going back to what you were saying a little bit earlier. When I first met him, uh, that was like 27 years ago. So like 27 years ago. Back when I was three. Yeah, and I had hair on my hair. Um, <laughs> back, in, back in those days, he, he encouraged his students to go to other schools, play with other styles, and prove that what he teaches actually works. And I went on a trip around the country. I went on a five-week trip around the country. And um, I, I went, at that time, there was phone books. There's actually yeah. no phone books. And um, What's that? I went to every martial arts school, and I wanted, I felt his skill, which is why I started training with him. When I, I, took, I had a background in karate, and in my neighborhood, I got in the most amount of fights. I was the quote unquote person who understood that type of thing the most. And I walked into his school and he hit me and I, I never saw like a, a white light before, like a flash of white, but it was so, the hit was so hard that it beat the, it just beat the fight out of me, man. And I, and I just got real quiet 
And I remember thinking to myself, this man just beat me up like Kung Fu theater. I, you know, I'm used to the kickboxing, you know, you're in your position, everybody, and he's just beating me up like it's a video game and, and he's doing moves on me. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And at the time I was really big into weightlifting and he was more of a twig than he is right now. I was 120 pounds. Right? So here's this. We've all gained yeah, that weight over the years. Haircut. So he had this weird looking haircut. He's telling me. That's a long story in itself. <laughs> that, that he goes, just looking at the guy, I'm thinking I could just throw him through a wall. It isn't like he's going to do anything to stop me. But he beat the crap out of me. So I went on this trip for five weeks. I walked into all these martial arts schools and I came back home. And I went, I first see who I thought it was an ego driven thing. You were telling me that these people don't know what they're doing until I started to actually touch hands with these people and go, holy crap, these people don't know what they're doing. Well, I have a comment that's going to back up your claim to exactly what you're saying. So we have to rewind 10 years ago. You and I were both part of Wing Chun Blast with Danny Horgan. Mm -hmm. You and I both, to, and a few others, had the stones to wind up meeting him. And for those who don't know, Danny Horgan is this... 6'2", 6'3", six, six, uh, great guy from uh, Boston. He's got to be Boston, East Coast. And um, he he started this documentary called Wing Chun Blast. And I was the first, uh, I think, were you number two? I think you were number two. And um, Danny reaches out to a bunch of us, and a few of us take him up on his offer to be filmed to explore the journey of Wing Chun. Um, I'd never met Danny before, never talked to him before. Danny shows up to uh, my gym, and we start training. And we did two minutes worth of cheese out, and I got just lit up by the Wing Chun community. You couldn't handle this kid. So you could. We. Uh, uh, well, I'm gonna get to that. All right. I so, story. Uh, we got a couple stories. Yeah. On this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Danny, Dan, oh, and I've, I've defended my position over the years, and the, I'm so glad I went first because when I watched what Danny did, everybody else, he, it's just Danny didn't have any formal training so it, he was outside it was uh, we had to control ourselves otherwise we would have gone right into a brawl danny texted me when we started talking about after he completed everything and he saw the the crap that both of us were taking danny texted me and said that out of everybody he touched hands with on video and, and off video he said that i gave him the most problem with strength and structure and he said sifu fu did things to me i cannot even explain that i don't even know another human being could do so I 100% believe you when you say that, because Danny told me. So that's that. You don't need to sell me on that. Well, I no, thought that. What I was going to say, can I say? Yeah. What I was going to say about because I want to give Danny props on this. We got thousands of comments about he got you here, he did yep. this, your kung fu's blah 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 blah, and you you pretty much summed it up. There's only so much you can do without hurting a person to prove a point. This wasn't about that, right? And the the whole point was. I think Danny was very humble very. and his responses and all his comments were very nice. So I very. never had an issue with Danny, but this knucklehead, he, he, because Danny was coming so far, he ended up playing Sifu when Sifu was sick. See, <laughs> had 101 fever. Yeah, you could know, you could he hear really it. He had an infection in his leg. Yeah, you could, you could, well, you could hear it in his nasal and he was talking on the video too. So uh, talk yeah, about I, that experience. I wasn't feeling strong, but he traveled all the way eight hours from Boston. I, I, I pretty much busted my ankle uh, a couple of days before it was swollen and I had 101 fever and had an infection, but I wasn't feeling good. This is why you see the video. I couldn't put forward pressure. I kept backing up every time I put pressure, my ankle hurt. So I stepped backwards. So I couldn't get my hands up. I was feeling weak, but I didn't want to tell him no, because he traveled right. eight hours. Talk about but your experience of that. And then I kind of want to bleed into I mean, that's the Wing Chun community. It's their critics. I, I, I want to, can I elaborate a little bit on yeah. that? So that was actually when we were just starting and our shell in. And actually, Danny didn't uh, go to us. One of his students, in, in public students, went to, to Danny to try to get him on. So this is all kind of like behind our backs. We find out about it and we're like, look, that's cool, but we need to be there filming too because there needs to be both stories because we, I, I've had times where I've been on live TV, they oh, yeah. edit the crap out of what you oh, say. Yeah. It is literally the opposite of what you said and you know for a fact you didn't say X, Y, and Z, but you can't prove it because you don't have a copy. Vice and News, are we you listening? Like, Look, we, well, exactly. Yeah, Vice News like, did that to me. They, I did a two-hour interview with Vice News and they uh, took five minutes out of it and made me sound like a, a horrible human being. Right, exactly. So I was like, we need to be able to film. And he's like, well, I already committed to this. And this. so we were we were actually against it because we couldn't film because that told us, all right, whoever, maybe not Danny personally, whoever was doing his, you know, stuff is probably not going to 
project an honest thing. And then the fact that he ended up being sick, it was just a bad thing. What was really thing good horrible. that he didn't film was uh, we did go to the grappling because I couldn't really stand. But yeah, that I took him down. Yeah, all the good stuff him. didn't make Danny it. Was, cut. Danny <laughs> was Danny uh, was he's doing wind chum blast, so it's not yeah. the graphic, but yeah, yeah. He was impressed. We we had a conversation and he said you did things to him that he did not know were humanly possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah Danny yeah. Danny was great, but like you said, the wing chun community as a whole really does suck. Look, people people <laughs> judge, they're always gonna judge. You know, like just come into the school and I I'm not here to try and defend myself. I'm here to show you my art and that's it. People come in, they challenge me all the time. That just happened to me the one bad day that I had a 101 fever. I had a bad ankle, but I did commit to it. And I said, listen, just come, you know, from four and he came eight hours. I just couldn't. I sprained my ankle. Like it was like we were filming on a Sunday and I sprained my ankle mm -hmm. Friday night. And it was really bad. Um, it was swollen like this big. I really couldn't stand on it. And so when um, I was doing it, I said, let's, okay, that's fine. I'll just push through it and figure it out. My arms weren't strong. I, I wasn't feeling good. It still looked so. good. Those of us who know, like I said, this this yeah. the fact that I the did people it. People that know, no. Yeah, when I when I did, if I had seen you first before I went with Danny, I would have been like, oh, he, what was this? What? But then because I went first with Danny, and I'm like, all right, I know my structure, my skill, I'm damn good. But I'm playing a game with a kid that doesn't know how to play the game. We were basically teaching him chi sao in while we were filming. So you, we would look like that with any student. So I kind of want to, I want to ask, why haven't you changed? Why haven't you, because I, I won't, but why haven't you let the comments and the viewers and everything else kind of like mold the way that you're uh, teaching? Why, why are you Why still, don't I do comments? Yeah. No, no, not, not why don't you do comments. Why don't you let the comments kind of like change you into being more inclusive into, why aren't you just mixing everything up and, and just leaving because Wing Chun entirely? Because my art is my art and nobody will tell me what I can do, okay? The, the reason why... Um, um, we have NDN system is because if I sit there and I say, oh, I'm under Yip Man's lineage and this and that, and you know what they're going to say? Well, that's not what Yip Man does. Well, I don't do what Yip Man's system, okay? I do my system, my art, so no one's going to tell me what my system is and what it isn't. That's why it's NDN Win Chun. It's NDN Tai Chi. It's NDN. It's what I do. I'm not here to copy someone else's and say that's theirs. This is principle. Principle belongs to the universe. God created these principles. I adhere to that. I put it together. I teach it in a way, in a matter of what, you know, I use rhyming principles, you know, I use uh, acronyms and stuff like that, like pop it, don't stop it, you know, three proof is full proof, you know, point rule one's focus. So I do it that way. And it's NDN. So no one's going to say, well, that's not how NDN does it. I am NDN. So no one's going to tell me how I should do my Tan Sao, Wu Sao, Pak Sao, whatever. No one, because I am not under your lineage. So you have no right to say what NDN is because I am NDN. So that's why we are enter Shaolin and the end. We are not here to sit there and try to mimic what someone else told me to do. I'm here to let you know what the principle of energy is and how it works best. And if you can like it and use it, prove it you know, and show it. I, we have people who comment and said, I've used your techniques and it made a big difference. I had a guy who was from America who lived in um, Iraq. He was a, a mechanic for, um, for the Iraqi Air Force. He was fixing it. But he saw my videos and he used some of my grappling techniques. He went in um, uh, Dubai in the grappling thing or where they have that thing. He used my techniques and he beat people. And uh, he came to train with me because uh, he followed the principles. He looked at it and said, he's a fighter. He's an MMA fighter. He, he, he has videos of him uh, fighting Muay Thai in uh, um, Thailand. He's, he, he does a lot of fighting. And he, used, he saw my techniques and he was open-minded and said, I'm going to try it. I'm going to follow it. And it worked for him. He said it worked. These people had no idea what it was all about, and they could not understand it. Now, again, our principles are different because you know a lot of people will draw backwards. They they receive energy. You know, I I don't receive energy. I initiate energy. I don't bring my arms up. Wait for you to come in. I come into you. We don't believe in defensive techniques because it makes you try to bring energy away rather than you put energy in. You know, we use the principle that only two things stops the person from attack. Or three things actually stops the person from attacking you. Right? Knock them out, lock them out, or they get what they want. So. Are you attacking them or are you trying to stop them? So that's not going to stop them. You have to create damage in the moves that's going to stop or isolate, lock, and control. That'll stop them. Or if they get what they want, right? And obviously, if they want to kill you, don't. If they want your money, just give it to them. It's not worth your life. But um, if you understand that they're going to try to kill you, then obviously, we don't want to give them what they want. <laughs> then we have to do one of the two things, knock them out or lock them out. Grappling is good, but the problem with grappling, like I like to say, is like, in an uncontrolled environment outside he's got a rock he's got this don't want to hurt you he's got buddies last thing you want to be is on the ground 
striking is the fastest way to do uh, a stopping guy. If you can train effectively, that's why boxing is such a great system. It can knock a guy out real quick. Uh, they get good hands. Uh, so I always preach get the strike first. And if you don't want to learn grappling, that's fine. You don't have to. What you want to learn to do is learn anti-grappling. You don't have to get into the grappling state, but you have to learn how to handle the grappler. And, and so like I had students that say, well, I have to learn how to grapple. I said, you don't have to learn how to grapple. If you don't want to be on the ground, you have to learn how to handle the grappler. Same thing with uh, somebody asked a question before in our, our videos, like, uh, should I learn how to do a hook punch? I said, Wing Chun. I said, no, you don't have to. What you have to do is learn how to deal with one. Um, you don't have to create a hook punch, but you have to learn how to handle one because other people can believe in hook punches. If you don't believe hook punches, it's fine. You know, you got to do what you like, but you got to handle other people's uh, 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 energy and stuff like that. So you don't have to throw a hook punch if you don't want to, but you have to handle one because someone will believe in hook punches. Someone will believe in grappling. So if you don't want to believe in grappling, you don't want to go grappling, that's fine. Learn anti-grappling. You don't want to believe in hook punches, learn how to deal with hook punches. This is the thing. You don't change to them. You make them fight. You know, the best fighter is the one who can make them fight your way because that's where you excel. That's why jiu-jitsu was so successful in the beginning because nobody really knew how to grapple in the beginning when they followed these strikers and then they made them fight their way. And so they panic. They try to go back. They turn their back. They extend their arms. This is why. But you see the new MMA guys, they're no longer out there. They do the ground pound. They're not trying to get away. They'll get in the ground. They'll go, go to the guard and they'll go for the strikes and make the guy want to get off. So martial arts is supposed to evolve. It's always been evolving. Kung fu has evolved. People think kung fu is stagnant. No, it's not. That's why there's so many different styles because they evolve, they change. There's di how many Tai Chi styles are there? There's Yang, there's Wu, there's Shun, there's No. Uh, there's all kinds of styles of Tai Chi. Okay, it's not a matter of the brand; it's a matter of the principle, of the energy behind it. Because I can, you know, build a car, but it's going to work on an engine, tires, or a transmission, and the stuff like that. It's all based on the same principles. And so, just how refined is the principle? Does it work well? Does it work efficiently? That's what really matters. Who cares what the style is? I don't really care style. That's why our motto is don't let style define you, let energy refine you. Because a punch is a punch is a punch is a punch is a, at the end of the day. But the, qu the question is how effective is it? Talk about the mentalities that need to be trained. Um, you are, you're, you're very internal. And we don't see that a lot, right? We, we see a lot of people I, who- um, Internal slash external. I do okay. not believe in internal alone. You cannot have all of one thing. It can't. That's not how the universe works. It, it's a it's a principle of energy exchanging. Where there's hard, there has to be soft. Where there's hard, there has to be soft. Uh, where there's hard, there has to be soft. Where there's soft, there has to be hard. That's why if you see the yin and yang, there's an interchanging of yin and yang. You can't be all soft. You have to have some hard. You can't be all hard. You have to have some soft. If you come too soft, you have no structure. You'll collapse. If you come too hard, you be committed. You overextend and you'll get taken. There has to be a balance. And within that little dot there, there could be a yin and yang in there. Within that little two dots there, there could be yin and yang. So it can go indefinitely. So yin and yang principle is about hard and soft that blends together. And there's no such thing. Like, I don't know if you've heard my philosophy before. There's no such thing as soft, okay? That's why soft styles fail. You cannot approach a fight being soft. Soft is not something to create. It's a byproduct of what you do on hard. You cannot get softer. You just control the degree of hardness. It works on the same thing as uh, thermodynamics. Thermodynamics says that there's no such thing as cold. It's just the absence of heat. You take heat away, it gets colder. That's how ice works. You put in ice, you got warm soda. It's not making the, uh, uh, the liquid cold. It's actually drawing the heat out of the liquid. That's why it feels cold. When you put your hand on something on a surface, it feels cold, not because the surface is cold. It's drawing the heat out of your fingers. It makes you feel that it's cold. That's principle. That's science. So um, there's no such thing as soft. It's the degree of hardness of how you do it. So when you approach something trying to be soft, it won't work. That pressure will break you. You have to have some form of hardness which is what the yin and yang says. That's not, it may be a lot of soft, it's a degree, it's, but there is a hardness behind there. There's, you cannot hit soft because you cannot create structure and you cannot influence without structure. So it doesn't matter how soft you are, and, but there's a hardness. What is soft then? What, what, what do we, when I say, I'm not, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna, anybody else's belief in soft. I'm gonna reach in the end soft. Soft for us is not about absorbing energy. It's about converting energy. You can't absorb energy. Well, if a sponge takes too much, it's going to expand. It can over uh, stretch itself. So soft for us is, is about the ability to convert. If I put 100 pounds of force and you're hitting me at 80, I don't have to convert. My structure is enough to take you. If you're hitting at 180 and I got 100, that 80 pounds will crush me. So what do I do with 80 pounds? That's where we convert energy. I keep 100. I just convert to 80. I'm not here to overcome. I'm not here to over challenge someone's pressure because I'm not going to beat him physically if he's much stronger. So what do I do? I just turn the energy. A bull, I can't hold my uh, his horns and stop him if he's charging me. But if I have my hands on his horns, I can turn his neck and turn him off in it. But I can't push him back. He's just too strong. So 
We use the principle of that's why risk is so important for us. Risk is the ability to steer energy. Arms are not. Arms are made to create structure. Arms are made intent. They're created to support the risk, so it's the risk in turn. The drill is the ex best example I use. If you spun a drill, you know, put the trigger down, it's spinning, and you don't put forward pressure, how much hole can you make? None. So if you don't squeeze the trigger and you push it through an object, if you put it through clay, it'll go through because the resistance of a clay is not as hard as your pressure. You know, you put it through wood, you might go maybe half an inch in. If you put it steel, you won't do anything. So how do you put a hole in a piece of steel? You got to create a torque with a drive behind it. That's science. See, that's not my belief. That's physics. We can mm -hmm. prove that. Same thing. You must create torques with the drive. Wrist is your torque, arm the drive. The beautiful thing about what we do in Wing Chun is the only changing force you have to deal with is actually your wrist. Your arms create the same. Shoulders always drive the elbow, always drive the wrist, always. There's no change. I will never drive from here to here. I will never drive from here to here. I will always drive from here to here. The only variable that changes is the wrist. So that's the only thing I have to adjust whenever I have to deal with people. I don't have to try to bring my arm over and bring here. No, I keep the base, keep the drive, and I just turn the wrist to handle the pressure. I don't have to do four different things. If I had a ball, I can juggle a ball with one ball. I had to do two or three and I never juggle before, I'm gonna drop them all. But with one, I can handle. I don't have to juggle three. I just have to deal with one. My control is my wrist. That's the only thing that changed. When I push an elbow and base, it's always the same. I'm always gonna drive here. I'm never gonna go from here to here. I'm never gonna go from here to here. I'm always gonna go from here to here. That's the only thing my elbow has to do from the shoulder. The only thing I have to do from my elbow and wrist is drive it to the side of my palm. This is the only variable that changes. Which is why when you look at your cylinder tile form, that doesn't move. And when I come back now, I've seen people do this and they pull the arm back, which I think is bad because you put in energy. You know, I always like to say backwards is deathwards. So I never go backwards. I never, backwards is no good. You're training yourself to take energy in your body. So when someone puts pressure in you, you have this muscle memory to go backwards. Now you're in trouble. Now you're going to get the pressure into you. You must always quit forward pressure and any pressure you feel coming into you, that's why the drive is important. If the base is there, it creates your foundation. That's what gives you a strong drive. If impact comes to my arm, I am driving my arm up. I tell people your arms are like an escalator. Anywhere it touches on your arm, you bring it to your wrist, and then the wrist turns the energy back. So it looks better. It looks better. So when someone energy. comes in, someone energy. comes in, I put the base, I drive it up, and I can hook the wrist in to take the control. Um, but when you're when you're doing like this, you see, when you start to try to put pressure on point, that's where he's strongest. Why are you going where he's strongest? He's not here. So I'm gonna drive it up, hook the wrist, and take it. Say so I turn the energy, whatever pressure he does, the science is, is he's gripping me, he's pushing me backwards, so it's going right here. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna curve up. If I threw an egg into a wall, I'll break the egg, but if it had a curve and I can catch it, I can rise it up. So every time he pushes me, I'll rise it. So instead of feeling the pressure here, I have the base, I have the ability to drive. Hook the wrist in and then I can take the guy. So I'm converting energy by the, the curvature. The reason why you can't muscle out a curve of is a line, because when you go in a line, the opposing force can create the pressure to go against it. Where's the line on a curve? Yeah, yeah, like I said, you were the first person that made me have the light bulb go, oh my gosh, we have spirals in Wing Chun, and I saw that in the opening move the first form. Talk about, yeah. do you... It's in Chum Kyo, it's in Bill G, it's in everything. Talk it's about the importance of that, because, you know, we're, America, we want everything now, instantaneously. Well, we, the Wing Chun doesn't work, I'm going to go in an MMA gym and start, pop, uh, you know, hitting the bag and whatnot. Is it, are we going to be losing Wing Chun because people don't see the value no. in spending time doing no. forms? No, because, because... All styles have merit, has value. You know, karate has value, uh, ninjutsu has value. Everybody will have their own flavor, like I said. Wing Chun is very popular, especially with the movies coming out. But honestly, Wing Chun is effective. It may, let's say, someone can say Wing Chun's not effective because it got beat up by um, an MMA guy right. who's been training. But here's the problem, which is I find is a fault, too. Um, yeah, how do you answer um, that when people ask you, well, how come you've never seen it work in the MMA? How do you t answer people? Do you, do you even waste your time well, with that? here's my view. The problem with, I think, Wing Chun today is Wing Chun has been trained to fight Wing Chun. That's that's my answer to people. And when you find a good Wing Chun school, I, I encourage people, go fight a boxer. Go fight with, with your Wing Chun. And you can see, like, I don't do times like this. Like I said, this is wrong, okay? When I do this, my energy says to go here. That's why they collapse under that pressure. My pressure has to go forward. You must have a base, you must have a drive, you have, must have a torque in order to make the energy work. Uh, that's the science behind it. And and I can prove it all the time. I, I've had boxers come in. I've had MMA guys. I had a six foot two, 245 pound guy come in from an MMA. He was some competition, gotten third, and he won third place. And he didn't think he, he, he that what I could do, because he's like 243 pounds. I'm 160 at the time. He's like, because my student was talking about the gym. And he's like, there's no way a 160 pound guy is going to beat me. So we sparred. I showed him. Okay. Because again, I can't beat him size for size.
but I can point for point. Okay, a guy who is big, a sledgehammer going to against a bigger guy, he can take more. But if you hit him like a knife, they all go down the same. So I don't how to teach how to compress hits. Most hits are designed to hit compression. I don't teach compression hit. I teach piercing hits. And there's a huge difference behind what you do. Um, boxers are taught to go from shoulder hand. They're missing that elbow. So that, that's where the fault is. And that's why they say put your shoulders behind it more, put more behind it. Because their answer to a bowed uh, um, two by four is to put a two by four on the side to stop the bow from bending when they put pressure. My answer is just get a straight two by four so the pressure is direct, so it's not off. So you don't have to waste much energy. Now that would work, but it costs you more energy, costs you more time, costs you more money. I'm not saying it doesn't work, it, it just costs you more. Again, mm -hmm. when you weigh it down to what it costs you. Here's my answer to this is, if, if MMA is so good, why do you have the weight classes? Why do you not put a 150 pound guy to a 250 pound guy? Like you used, used to because be in the beginning. it's not efficient for smaller people. Right. You don't sit there and say that MMA is so good that you can take a 120 pound guy fight a 250 pound guy. There's size and there's strength that's involved. And I'm not saying it's no good. It works for them and it works. I'm not here to put that down, but you're not gonna sit there and tell me that you're gonna put a 120 pound guy in an MMA and fight a 250 pound guy and say he's gonna no. win. No, and that's how so, it was in the, the beginning. Size, the first, the first couple of years of, of you know the ultimate fighting championship we, championship, we saw that. But we saw what happened as people started, it became boring and people wanted more action. Yeah, well, you gotta understand that is an entertainment. That is not about fighting. There is an entertainment factor behind that. Um, if it didn't make money by entertainment, it wouldn't be alive today. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why it almost died until uh, I forget which fighters came in. They made it more entertaining. Tito is one of them. Other people came in. Um, they made it entertaining. That's how. But it almost came that close to shutting down because it got boring, like you said. But they changed the rules, made it so it would become more. In fact, like I said, kicking to the kneecap, kicking to the groin. You see an accident when even with a cup, they could kick to the groin. They had given five minutes. Because in a real fight, if you do that, that guy's going to drop. It's not going to want to continue. There are a lot of things you cannot do in an MMA fight that you can do in the street. No downward elbow strike or someone in the back of the neck. There is no eye gouging, no poking. Those are things that save your life. Bruce Lee had a video where he fought, a, uh, had a student train with a guy. The guy shot him down. He said, I can't do anything. Bruce Lee says, yes, you can. And he said, what, what, what can't I do? Bite. He's right there in your face. Bite him. You know, you know, you know, I bring this story up all the freaking time because he's not, he's true to his word. When, back in when UFC was popular, everybody was ground fighting and grappling and I was training with jiu-jitsu guys and ground fighter guys and I don't know how to do any of that stuff. So I started ground fighting with Sifu and I had him good, man. This is going back to, I had his legs, I had his arms, he's up here. I'm like, I got this little slanty eye son of a, he turned his head he bit my nipple, dude. He mm. bit my nipple, released my hands, grabbed my arm, stuck it around my neck, rolled me sideways, and choked me on my own my own arm. D yeah, did you say, well, that's not Wing Chun. Yeah. <laughs> that's the problem. That we are talking about something I run into all the time is I'm a shorter man, and my I wrestled forever before I found Wing Chun. And every time that I find the Wing, the Wing Chun concepts and principles that live in grappling space, everybody accuses me, oh, you're going back to grappling. It's like... I, I, no, so you're 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 talking about that problem that we have in this very close-minded uh, uh, so, uh, uh, co community we have of Wing Chun. I just did a video, and it was a real short video. I, the guy who filmed it gave it to me. It was with him trying to do a double leg takedown, and me Freddy. counter Freddie, and me countering his energy with him not being able to take me a double, give me a double leg takedown. This guy had over three hundred fights. Was the guy's a beast. Marine, wrestled in high school, wrestled champion. in college, champion wrestler. He knows how to do a damn double leg takedown. I had people after people going, "Well, you know, did he switch his? Did he switch his sector? Right? Did he do this?" I'm like, "Does I, it matter?" I can't explain it. I can't explain. It. That's why I keep saying, if I had known Wing Chun back when I was competing, I would have been a four time state champion. There's no question. It's just it is not. You're not. You're taking concepts and principles and applying into it, but wrestling and Wing Chun, it's they're not the same. So I, I 100%. Well, well, again, like for me, and I don't know, everybody has different arts, different ways they learn. Like some people, like I said, some Wing Chun schools might teach grappling and say, yeah, yeah, we do do grappling Wing Chun. It's not you do grappling Wing Chun. Traditionally, if you look at Wing Chun for what face value, what it is, Wing Chun is not a grappling system. It is not. It's a close quarter fighting system. That's what it's known for. Two things: close quarter fighting and center line. That's what traditionally Win Chun is known for. Okay. The unfortunate thing I see in people today, there's no close quarter fighting. They're all this very far here. Okay. That, it's become, like I said, watered down. And same thing. And I'm not bashing karate. 
karate from the, in the past, from what I heard, they were t t t destructive. They were powerful. Once it got organized and it became a business, it was getting the money in. Giving the black belt back in the day when I was like a kid, it took you 10 years before you became mm -hmm. a black belt. You can't get a black belt by the time you're 12 years old. So it's not about training the art. It's about getting the money. And unfortunately, Wing Chun's following that path. You got so many schools of Wing Chun, and you see they're just teaching principle of just getting you the money. Sifu's birthday, give me money. It's Chinese New Year, give me money. It's all about the money. I'm not about the money. I'm about the art. And uh, you see, like, I don't do a tantal like this. I think it's horrible. I think you're going to get punched in the face. I guarantee you got punched in the face. There was somebody who was a teacher. I was sitting there. We we're discussing it. And he's like, you know, teaching me, telling me like, oh, we use a wrist. And he's like, oh, yeah, we use a wrist. And I'm like, uh, no, you're turning your wrist for the arm. You're not turning your wrist from the wrist. Uh, no, I, I best describe it now as it, it should be the head of snake, not the tail of snake. And he did. I, God, and I, I felt myself, that when you I, said that. When you just said that, I could, I could, I could visualize and feel that. See, it's fantastic. Go ahead. So I said, he fights the guy who's throwing a whole punch. He's going to get punched in the face. Sure enough, he was uh, a teacher, and he basically did a demonstration, and the guy threw a whole punch, smashed him right in the face. I knew it would. I said, he's going to smash. His elbow's going inside, and he's extending. He's not hitting point. He's going past point. He's trying to move the arm away rather than hit on point. We are not about the defensive side. See, when you're defensive, you try to get away from you. That's why I don't like that mentality. When I teach people, I said, the first thing I got to teach you is your mindset. First weapon you always have is your mindset. So uh, first thing I taught him was get your mindset to think you're not here to stop a punch. You're here to make a punch. You're not here to get his hands out. You're here to get your hands in. So when he throws a hook punch, I'm not here to push his hands away. So see if the is going to come. I'm not doing hook punch. So I don't do this where like, tradition Wing Chun. Yeah. Like this. Okay. Yeah. This, you get killed. I go like this and I put my pressure into him. I don't bring the pressure off me. I don't try to alleviate pressure, getting that away. That's defensive. I'm not attacking it. I'm putting a guard up to try to prevent it from coming in, which he'll ride right over. He does it again. I initiate the hit. I initiate. I'm not here to receive it. I'm here to initiate. This is receiving hand. When you do this, that's receiving. You're getting the energy coming to you. When I initiate, I don't initiate from the hands. I initiate from the arms. This is us. This is a control. This is not strength. Hands cannot fight mid-range to close range, which is why he can hold his hands out like this, and I could go like this, and he can hold it all day. He gets his hand at a mid-range oh. level. Oh my I'll God. crush him every time. <laughs> it, that's why you have to use forearms and arms. That's why when you look at Chum Kuehl, it's it, what does Chum Kuehl mean? It means searching the bridge. It's about developing this, not this. What this is, is your control. It is not your strength. It is not your force. It's the ability to focus energy because of this. It's your ability to control energy because of this. And that's the difference of why, like, my wind chant is not Yipman's, it's not uh, uh, anybody else's, because we emphasize what everybody else does not. What, we where did, where did we go wrong? Where did the art go wrong? To, you, you see the countless Chi Sao demonstrations. It's become a Chi Sao art, Chi Sao demonstration. Competition. Has soft. Problem is well, competition. You know, I have a different, uh, coming from a karate background, I have a different take on, on what I think is really going on in the wind chant community. Money. Well, Money, that's of course. Stature. Um, but. You know, when I was trying to do this early on, I thought maybe I'll be a martial arts instructor. I was very conflicted because I knew his story. I know his martial arts. I'm going on YouTube trying to figure out who else is doing it like him, right? Because he does Wing Chun. So who else is doing Wing Chun? I'm going, what the heck, dude? Nobody does it this way at all. So I'm trying to open up a school. I, what kind of certificate am I going to put on my wall when someone goes, well, who, who's your teacher? Well, who taught your teacher? Who taught him? Who taught this person? Who taught that person? I'm like... How am I going to make money? So in, in all these different Wing Chun families, I think a big issue really is financial gain versus financial loss, pride, and ego. So I agree with Sifu Fu. We just cut all that out, and we're just like, all right, well, we're just not a part of anybody or anything, and we're just doing what we do, which is no that not. Well, I, I had that problem when I was teaching, and people are like, who's your teacher? I was like, listen, I'm just going to show you what I do. Proof is in the pudding. You do whatever you can. If you can't beat me, then obviously you have something you can learn from. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I had to do it. Um, I was young. I was 19, 20 years old. I had people like 25, 30 years old, like, but you're so young, you're so small. Like, I was like, well, tell you what, you can spar me and we can see proof is in the pudding. I don't have to sit there and try to convince you. I'll just do what I do, you do what you do, and then you come up with your own conclusion. So now where did Winchon get go wrong? My, my personal belief, again, I don't have the data, I don't have the facts, but I've seen history of how martial arts became watered down. Uh, karate's one of them, okay? 
but I think karate is awesome. I, I, I tell people all the time. Now, I think karate has very great positions with their structure in the arm. I just think the energy is bad behind it because they're not using their wrists, they're using their shoulders. And, and that's another story. I did a seminar for karate and I punched a guy and I brought his karate block, boom, right, hit, hit his face because he's doing from the shoulder. I taught him how to do it from the wrist. And when he did, I punched, he stopped it after like, you know, practicing all the time, teaching how to use the wrist. And they were doing it to other, uh, other people. And they're like, man, what a difference it makes. So I think the wind churn problem is like anything, once you become um, um, an organization and you spread and you spread and spread, you're not teaching anymore. You're, you're now uh, taking the quality out so you can get the money in. It becomes a business and you're not, you're trying to get people to get in there as fast as you can, get them to get hooked on it, and then spread that out more and more and more. And the problem is, is if I'm teaching and I get somebody to become a teacher in three years, he comes and he teaches somebody in a year, you see how it gets watered down. Same mm -hmm. thing when they say when I pass an information, by the time it gets to 100 percent, it's going to be a totally different story. It's not going to be she. It's going to be he. It's not going to be because of a fire. It's because of a tornado. It's not going to be because 10 people died. It's because 5,000 people died. You can see it gets, it gets watered down. That's just... That's its nature when something deteriorates in time. And when you go into organizations and you start spreading it and you go, and then when Chan started a community where they do Chi Sao and Chi Sao alone. Mm -hmm. And so rules start changing the way you start uh, teaching. So I did a, a Chi Sao competition. You weren't allowed to hit in the face. You weren't allowed to do this. So, and all these people, literally, this guy, if you step out of the ring, you lose a point, they gain a point. They're just trying to grab your hands and push you out. And I'm literally like, what the? I don't go mm -hmm. like, and I can't even hit the face because all they do is they bring their hands, try to bring you down, chop, push you, and put the weight. I'm like, this is not Wing Chun. You know what and another problem is? I want to address this too because you said this. Um, huh. I felt pretty stupid um, training with Sifu Fu because after five years, I never even knew what Rowan Chi Sao was. I, all I was working on was basic drills out of Sil and Tao, five straight years. Um, I didn't even move. I didn't even move from my position. I just did one thing. And so this one of another guy who was trained with Sifu Fu went to another Wing Chun school who said, oh, he's teaching you too slow. I'm going to show you all this stuff real fast. And within like six months, the guy who started after me, <laughs> he was doing Chi Sao. He was, he was doing Chum Kyul. He was moving, right? I was still fixing it. He goes, and, and I saw him at a, at a deli. And, he, and he's, he's like, oh, Larry, you still training with Sifu Fu? I'm like, I am. He's like, you doing that Chum Kyul stuff yet? I said, I'm not. He goes, you want to spar? <laughs> I'm like, sure, dude, come over. We'll go in my basement. And so we go in the basement, and I all I knew was Sil and Tao stuff. And he goes, I'll play a little bit lower because I know you're not that advanced yet, right? <laughs> I blasted the crap out of him. With a pack, a ton, straight blasting, cycle punching, lopping his hand down. And he just looked at me. I'm like, I don't know, man. I, gotta, I can just go straight. <laughs> so I was willing. Now, my background is my father started teaching me martial arts at a very young age. But what I learned was to listen and not really question what was being told to me. My father had 28 years in the military, so mm -hmm. he raised me. I'm an army brat is what I am. So I listened to Sifu Fu, and I just did what he said because he hit me so hard. Go back to the first time I met him. Nobody on earth ever hit me the way that he hit me and made me feel the way that I felt for like weeks afterwards. And I wanted that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever that is, I have to have it. So I'm just going to listen to this guy and do what he says. But I watched other students leave because he wasn't teaching them fast enough. So there's a, I got a very... question on that because I want to hear your, your philosophy. So I left, I stopped teaching in 2017. I was just pissed off about everything. I just, I just, I went off the channel and everything. And when I came back, I wanted to start teaching again to my, my, my method of teaching is I want to make the students better than me. So I have really good training partners. So I get better. That's just how it is. Um, and I started to think about, wait a second. I know that we're in the day and age of this is, you know, instant gratification. If I have somebody doing center line punch a thousand times for three, four weeks in a row before they move on, they're going to irritate. But then, but then I started looking, Jin Young had said years ago, he thought that, the forms are taught backwards, and you should start with Bill Jean to, and then go back to Selim Tao. What, what is your philosophy on are we teaching the right way where, you know, you, you're doing something 10,000 times until you feel the internal aspect so of it? Can I, can I say what I do? Go ahead. So I, I, I ran into the same problem. So with my students, I actually start right away with sensitivity training, and then I show them what's possible by, be, by controlling the game itself so they feel like they're playing much better and at a higher skill. And after they feel really good, like they're making progress, I destroy them. 
And then we go back to the basics and then we start the long process of really learning how to do this. But I try to get somebody to see what's possible first, what they can obtain, because I know that the only way to get there is hard work. Yeah, <laughs> there again, are no kung fu time. means you know what is it hard work developed through a skill yeah. developed through hard work some it teachers means, uh, i have a friend a very very good friend who has an extremely successful uh school in florida doesn't doesn't have people touch chi sound until five years so where are we in teaching so here's my philosophy and when it comes to teaching and everyone's going to have their own principle uh teaching um i believe in the basics like Ability is advanced. It requires you to move your body, learn how to use close quarter fighting. If you don't have the basis on how to create structure, how to create integrity, how to create control, then you shouldn't be teaching someone that advanced. It's like saying, um, let's build the third floor first, and then we'll build the second, the first floor, then we'll build the foundation afterwards. Um, that's wrong. The principle is always a foundation. Now, when we go about foundation, someone like, let's say, yeah. use the English language, you learn the alphabet. You can teach dog, you can teach cat, you can de teach, you know, hi, bye. They're fine. They're basic words. And you said, well, I like to teach the word dog first. And someone says, no, I'd rather use the word cat. It doesn't make a difference. It falls along the same level. So you can teach any way as long as it's within that level. The next level, you can teach any way as long as it was within that level. The way I break down Wing Chun is I use Silent Tao's level one, Chum Kyo's level two, Bilji's level three. And the reason why I do that is because Silent Tao... The principle of Tao is about teaching you structural integrity with the arms. Learn how to get to center line. Learn how to develop um, proper structural integrity, the wrist control. Now, for me, it's about wrist control. A lot of people in Wing Chun do not teach wrist control. I see huns like this, okay? It's useless. And they say, oh, it's about uh, creating flexibility. No, it's crap. It's because the real reason is I don't know how to answer that, so I'll use my, my status as a teacher so you can believe it and say it's for stretching. No, it's not. It has no value, and if you're teaching your muscles to do that, you're training your muscles to do bad techniques. So why would you train someone to do that in a bad technique? No. You want to stretch? Go stretch. You want to do form for combat? Then it has to be combat-related to be effective. Uh, that is not effective, then don't teach it. Why am I going to teach someone to do hun like this? It has no value. A hun should be from the wrist and the forearm uh, because I, I talk about it all the time. See if Larry can come in. If you're just doing this with your wrist and you have no forearm strength to drive, Nothing. Use your form to make a circle to get that. So again, I teach everything. I back up everything through the science. I back up everything through the facts and I prove it. You know, I tell people when I do seminars, I don't take my students to do seminars. They come, they watch me, but I ask for the biggest, strongest guy from another school. And I tell them, hit me as hard as you can. Punch me as, do not let me do this. Do not let me do that. This is my objective to you. You do everything you can to understand not to let me do it. And I do it. So I want to show them that this is not cooperative techniques, it's at full resistance. It's at full power. I don't want you to do it. I tell them, don't let me do it. Like, no, oh, just go easy. I mean, no, I said, go hard, hard as you can. I did a demonstration where I had a six foot four guy. I literally had him hook punch me as hard as you can possibly hook punch me. And I just stood there uh, like, just like this in the beginning. Then I said, I, I'll stand with my feet together and I stood on one leg and he still could not knock me over. I had him punch me as hard as you can. It wasn't my student. I just said, I need the biggest, strongest guy in here. Who knows how to throw a hook punch? And, I, and they're like, what? what? Said, Here's the biggest guy who throw a hook punch. And I had him do it. And he could not move me over because I demonstrate. I'm not opposing force, which is why. You know, I use the numbers. What's zero times five? Zero. Zero, right? So zero times 100. Zero. Zero times 1,000. Zero times a billion. It's still zero. If I won't fight it, then his strength doesn't have a factor. Strength cannot be applied unless resistance is, is, is there. So I won't resist. Okay? And then it's like, well, if you don't have resistance, how are you going to withstand? Oh, there's the difference between um, um, passive resistance and active resistance. I will not actively resist you. I will passively resist you. And there's a difference. A wall, when you hit it, is it resisting you or not? It's not, but, it, you yeah. know. It is. Oh, it it's is? It's called passive okay. resistance. Yeah, it's called passive resistance. If you hit a wall that was made of a piece of paper and you punch it, what would happen? It would go right through. You go through it. So there's resistance. It just wasn't high enough. Mm -hmm. You punch a concrete. It's not going to What happens? Right. You'll break your hand. Well, why did you punch through a piece of paper the first time and not a concrete? There's a resistance in it. It's called passive resistance. It's a structural integrity of it. Active resistance means it has to oppose you. Passive resistance is just the nature in which it is, structural integrity, which is what we teach. So you have to teach through to understand how energy is in nature. And that's universal truth. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter your belief, your gender, your race, your nationality. Your, your, it doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. Science is science. Energy is energy. Universal truth is universal truth. So I like to teach universal truth. 
And I demonstrate all the time. I, I do it all the time. I have people come and demonstrate. I'm not here to convince you from my student. I'm here to convince you we from have, somebody else's student. Look, we, we, um, we got, we, I, I don't He's mean to interrupt like, you. We, we, have, we have a couple minutes left and I want to, I want to, I want to, Ask a different question. Normally, it's hey, what kind of problems do you see that could be a fi uh, fix in the Wing Chun community, or whatnot? But you're you're answering them as you go. It's always turning back to principle base. I want to ask: Has there ever been in the last several decades of your journey? Have you ever had like even now, like self discovery moments? You're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I didn't notice that uh, for the last thirty years. Well, I always practiced for my energy. So the the the, the biggest wow moment I have in my life was basically. Once I started teaching the energy, that was where I started training differently. And so I started developing rhyming principles. I started developing, um, 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 uh, what do you call that? Acronyms to develop. Because see, when students remember that, they'll be able to So I want to talk about my biggest wow moment because it, it changed. It made me go from where I was and I got 95% better in a snap of a oh, finger. Oh, Tai Chi? <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't just the Tai Chi. So we have a rhyming principle. Um, you have to be a cop to know your foe, right? It's one of my favorite sayings that we have. Cop stands for consistency of pressure and foe stands for force of energy. I never understood a lot of what he said until I understood what it meant to be a cop, consistency of pressure. Consistency of pressure means that you're aware of your energy from your, from, and basically in Wing Chun, you have your ankles, your knees, your hips, your shoulders, your elbows, and your wrists. You have all those joints. When you can feel the pressure evenly at all those different joints, then you start to have consistency of pressure because then you can feel everything at once. And then, and then at that point, you can understand who your foe is, the force of energy. A lot of people, I thought for the longest time, Dominic, that if I turned my waist and I turned my wrist, I was connected. I thought I understood what that terminology meant. It wasn't until I trained for 10 years, gave up on my Wing Chun because it wasn't working for me and said, Sifu, what, what do I got to do to make this better? Because I, I can't get stronger. I can't get fast enough. And there's just some faster and bigger people. I got a little bit of skill and a lot more strength and tenacity. And that's all that's pulling me through, dude. But I'm sweating and I don't want to sweat no more. And so he's like, you got to do Tai Chi. I tried doing Tai Chi for years. And it was just too slow, too boring. I have too much ADD. It just wasn't for me. It wasn't until I felt pretty hopeless in my training. All I did was my Tai Chi form. For no reason, no rhyme. I just trained the form. And then one day, Dominic, I, I, I went to open up my form. And I felt my heart beating in my ankles, in my inner thighs, in my wrist, the in pulse, my, sure. my pulse. Gee. Where every every single spot where that heart could be pulsing, I felt all at once for the first time in my life. And then it was like in that one moment, my body internally connected to itself, and my kung fu started to take a life of its own. Yeah. And all of a sudden, everything I couldn't do before, I can now start doing. So I do attribute all of that to just finally connecting my body to itself and being a cop, having consistency of pressure. Good to hear. Yeah, That's I have no, I have no experience with uh, Tai Chi except for trying to move a guy who does Tai Chi out here, uh, and I couldn't move him. His root was so good. And then we do, we have heard that Hawkins Chung was told to incorporate Tai Chi into his uh, Wing Chun because he was so aggressive, and that just made his Wing Chun even better. Um, we have a couple minutes left. Tell everybody about where they can wind up following you, supporting you, working with you, everything. Just just drive some people to you. All right, CD Jamie will say it. Yeah, I'm the one that pretty much runs the show um, on all the stuff. So if you guys want to find out more about us, you can visit our YouTube channel, Enter Tai Chi, or our other one, Enter Shaolin. And more Enter Tai Chi show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More on the Enter Tai Chi though. <laughs> yeah, um, but we, we do film on both of them, just different stuff, like when we have more like members content, uh, interviews with members and testimonials and stuff. And the other one is the one that you guys probably have seen us at before. And then if you guys would like to come check out more about what Nodak Na is, you can go to the website, entershallen.com. We have a couple of freebies and different stuff where you can check out uh, the different rhyming principles that he was talking about and find out a little bit more about why we say, don't let style define you, let energy refine you. Excellent. This was the first conversation we've ever had, and I hope to have many more. So uh, thank yeah. you. One more so, thing, Dominic. Yeah. I want to say this. Dude, I love what you're doing on mm -hmm. YouTube. And I'm going to go one step further because I'm following you on Facebook now. I just love what you're doing in, in general for America. How's that? I, I think you. I appreciate that. I'm just. I'm okay, just, I mean, that's where I'm at. We're, we're just being me. Chairs, hey, well, you know what? Thank your Sifu, because if it wasn't for him, like I said, 10 years ago, when I really started to do any type of teaching on Wing Chun, if I hadn't seen his content that said, Here's a man who is not afraid to express himself. I wouldn't have given myself permission to do it. 
So it is, it is men like him that allowed me to do this. So, again, great to connect with you. It's finally great to talk to you in person, so to speak, and I look forward to having you on for many more conversations on this. Other than that, guys, I uh, hope you appreciate and love this episode. Make sure you follow uh, Sifu Fu and everybody else, and we'll see you on the next episode of Them's Fighting Words.